Not all landscaping projects require starting from scratch. In this special episode, Jen helps a few homeowners bring their existing gardens back to life. We are completely overwhelmed with weeds. I'll transform this chaotic patch of weeds into a tranquil secret garden. All right, Jen, come on in the backyard. Wow, I'm bringing the landscape back in time by transforming this overwhelming mess with a little help from a historic design plan. After seven years, we feel like the landscaping needs just a little bit of updating. Sometimes you could get a whole new look in your yard without buying any plants and I'll show you how. Hi, Alex. Hi, Jen. Thanks so much for coming. Great house. How long have you lived here? So we've lived here for nine years, my husband and my three kids and I. There's a reason that I invited a landscape designer to come to see my house. If you want to come in and see a little bit more. Let's go take a look. Go. Very curious. So come on in. Nice double doors here. And you don't see staircases like this anymore. <laughs> well, if you like this, I have some serious history to show you. Come with me in the dining room. All right. OK, so this is actually the reason why I emailed you. This is a landscape plan from 1914. This is something that each homeowner passes down from one person to the next. And this was done by a landscape architect named Harold Hill Blossom. This is a great name for a landscaper. Um, I actually went to the Historical Society, did a little bit of research on him, and he was actually a protege of Frederick Olmsted. Frederick Law Olmsted, creator of Central Park in New York City, Smithsonian Zoo in DC, and right here in Boston, the Emerald Necklace. I mean, he really wanted to bring a naturalized, woodsy setting into an urban environment. So on your plan here, can I take a look yeah, at this? Yeah, yeah, knock yourself out. So on this plan, it really looks like there is a dense layered border all along this right property line. As a screening from your neighbors and as a viewpoint out the library, you want to look out your window and look into nature and really feel like you're in a beautiful sanctuary setting. Um, and as you look at the plant list, we've got viburnums, we have lilacs, we have rhododendrons, and even some hydrangeas and azaleas in here. And this really helps create that thick, dense screening, having a layered border of various heights. And I really like these stepping stones, like because Olmsted really liked bringing people into the garden just to have the experience and going around a curved path. What I would love to be able to do is to take this plan and kind of put it in my backyard, which has become a mess over the past nine years. So could we do a little retro landscaping? I would love to pull from this plan whatever we can and implement in your backyard. Cool. All right, Jen, come on in the backyard. Wow. Yeah, you think this is what uh, Olmsted's apprentice had in mind? I mean, Olmsted is into wild and <laughs> making it look natural, but this is just a little bit too far yeah. gone. Took it to a whole new level, didn't I? Right. Okay. But understandable, busy life, three kids, mm -hmm. working mom. Yep. But we've got a lot of weeds here, but there are some great stuff. Yeah, so what's worth saving back here? There is this beautiful dogwood, I think if we trim this up. It's a flowering dogwood. Um, it puts on yep. quite a show in the spring. Sure. Pink, beautiful flowers, maybe white sometime. I mean, you have plants like right here. There's this clematis. <laughs> Do you know that I've been pulling that up, thought it was weed for eight years straight? This is sweet autumn clematis. It flowers white in September. And I think what we could do is just pin it up on the fence. Okay. So reuse and recycle stuff like All that. Right. I see sedum. Sedum is another fall bloomer. So that paired with the sweet almond clematis is a beautiful match. Okay. And then we have hydrangeas. We get the nice blue ball on top yep. or, or even the peonies. This blooms in the spring. Nice, right. puffy, beautiful spring blooming flower. So what I would like to do here is rip everything out of mostly weeds and then dig up the perennials that are worth saving, set them aside and then reintroduce from Olmsted's apprentice's plan, pull stuff from his plan so we could start to recreate that layered feeling. So you have focal points from inside your house and as well as when you're sitting out here. Cool. All right, let's do it. Alright, so this sedum I want to save, but it's being overtowered by this hydrangea. So I want to just dig it out. 
we're going to set it aside and put it in a sunnier spot where it has more room to grow. Do you want me to grab it? No, I have it on the shovel because I don't want the root ball to fall apart. And that way, we'll keep it all intact. And I'm going to go put this on the tarp. And we'll save it for later. Okay, so we have cleared out all the weeds and saved all the perennials we we're going to save and left the bones of the plantings like this beautiful flowering dogwood, your lilac, and your viburnum. But now, the next step, we are going to add stepping stones. I love that on the plan. These are New England stepping stones. I love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay them out and then we'll adjust them at the end, okay? Okay. So we're going to make a little trellis for this sweet autumn clematis to grow up. So we're going to put a few nails in, line some string around it, and then start the training process. So some people cut this back all the way at the end of the fall, and some people just let it go. You know, it's all attached by this tiny little root right here. That's crazy! Right? OK, Alex, all the plants have been laid out. Okay. And I want to explain it to you. Right. So I really love the plan that you showed me earlier. It had more of a woodland feel. So I think what you were asking for is more of a cottage feel. Totally. Meaning you want to see color all year round and just keep different blooms going at different times. Right. And so I pulled uh, plants from the plant, such as these Annabelle hydrangeas, and then I paired it with something new, this butterfly bush. Uh, these, these are pollinators. They'll bring in butterflies. So they're going to go off around the same time. All right. Right? And so Moving down the garden, we have your peony that was existing here, and we paired it with the bearded iris, or German iris, which was on your plant. And I thought that would complement your peonies because they bloom at the same time. Cool. Another sequence for your garden. All right. And this is the clematis that we staked up earlier that was existing. Right. And this sedum was also existing. And I got two more to pair it with this one. All right. Um, another late summer, great early fall blooming. Right next to this one too, right? Clematis. Next to this one. And we got one more autumn clematis cool. to complement what you have here. So you could have a wall of green. Uh, a few more peonies to add the sequence down the garden. And underneath your flowering dogwood, we have Shade City, Love which it. I pulled from your plan, hay scented ferns. All right. Um, these hostas were yours. We divided them. And then traveling down the stepping stone path, we have some phlox. This is tall garden phlox. It blooms midsummer and it attracts pollinators and it was on the plan. It's a trifecta. You dig the hole twice as wide, not quite as deep. Tip it upside down. Tease the roots a little bit so the roots are all going to go out into the soil. Got it. Hold on to it in case it falls apart. And then you want the top of the plant to be the level of the ground. And we also have some bulbs to put in. We're going to do daffodils that come up first, followed by tulips, and then alliums, which bloom from May to June. And it has a huge, round, purple head. So we're going to put mulch down around the plants going to help retain moisture, but you don't want to cover the base of it because it'll rot the stems where it meets the plant. So Alex, what do you think? Feeling a little Olmsted? Yeah, with your own Gen stamp on it. This place looks amazing. I cannot thank you enough. I hope you come back for a party in the spring when all the bulbs are blooming. All right, I'll be here. Jen, thanks for coming by today. Thanks for having me, Chris. This place looks incredible. Well, thank you. We uh, built the place about seven years ago and worked with a landscape designer on the backyard, and we really like how it turned out. I mean, you have a sitting area, beautiful patio, a sitting wall, focal points out in the garden. Love your red twig dogwood, and your plantings are amazing. Well, thank you. So the reason I emailed you, Jen, is after seven years, we feel like the landscaping needs just a little bit of updating. Mm -hmm. And we've got a particular problem over here, which is this dogwood tree. As part of the original design, it was acting as a screen between our backyard and our neighbor's backyard. And it's since died, so that's something we need to address. 
Right, because that is a crucial focal point between you and your neighbors when you're sitting on your patio. You want some privacy, right? Exactly. So as landscape designers, we try to put the right plant in the right place. Uh, but sometimes that changes due to environmental conditions, uh, such as this canopy of this walnut tree. I suspect seven years ago wasn't extending this far into the garden. True. So the shade patterns, the sun patterns change, and I think the shade has stunted the growth of these two viburnums right here, and that one definitely got more sunlight. Dogwoods are pretty shade tolerant, so I'm not exactly sure what caused it to die, but the same principle applies. Either way, I have an idea. Since you love all the plants that you have here, um, I think we could play some landscape checkers with your plants here, and then you don't have to go out and buy any new ones. Sounds like a great idea. All right, let's see what we could do. Okay. So let's start with taking this dogwood out. Since we're not trying to save this tree, we can break down the root ball to make it easier to get out. All right, should All we right. give it a try? Let's do it. You want to grab from the basket or up here? I'll do the basket. That's okay. it. There we go. Nice. Let's roll it this way. We'll move the big viburnum to the dogwoods place since it could do most of the screening. We'll be a little more careful with this one since this is going to be our new screen plant. All right, Chris. I think we're good. Okay. Well, let's try it. So what we're going to do is tip the viburnum this way onto the tarp and into the other hole. Okay. All right, so let's give it a shot. Right. We'll see what happens. So far, so good. All right. Okay. Let's, let's scoot it this way so we can position it to the hole. So if you want to push and I'll pull. Okay, now let's go this way and then we'll position it in the hole. Okay. okay. Awesome. All right, let's stand this guy up. Wow, that looks pretty good, Chris. All right. You think that's good? That looks good. To replace the hole left by the big viburnum, we'll dig up the smaller one and put it in its place. All right, I think we got it. Yep. So, let's lift this up, Chris. And get to the bottom. I'm gonna grab this part of the basket. Okay, you go first. All right, the hole looks big enough. Now just hold it, Chris, and we'll see if that's a good face. Okay. I think that looks good from because you want it from the patio side, and the back side will fill out with the new sunlight. All right, looks good. All right, so we'll go ahead and backfill this one now. For any transplant, it's always a good idea to add some starter fertilizer to stimulate the roots. Just broadcast it evenly around the plant. Okay, we have the backbone of the project in, the structure of these viburnums. That one was already there, right? And this one is an amazing screen from your patio right here. And then this one from underneath the walnut tree is gonna provide a, a beautiful screen in the future. Now that's gonna get a little more sunlight. So, but let's look at the blank areas in the ground here. Um, your stepping stone pathway is covered by these perennials. This is a beautiful coneflower, echinacea. So what I'd like to do is dig it up, cut it in half and divide it and put it around to fill in the blank areas. Great. So just try to get a little root ball around it because the perennials don't, they're going to be nowhere like those viburnums. I have to go around it. 
So what I think we could do is take these two plants and make them into four plants. So get your shovel. Okay. Lay the plant down. This uh, doesn't hurt the plant at all? No, the plant's gonna thrive even more. Okay. Cut it right in half. Okay. And we'll get water on them right away after we transplant. Some might break off, but you'll have the roots. Hey, Jen, what, what about this fern here? It seems way overgrown. Can we move that? It kind of has outgrown its space. What are you thinking? I don't know, maybe one of these blank spots over here? Now you're thinking like a designer. I think that's perfect. It would give this mountain laurel much more space to grow into. This one will be tucked right into the stone, so might take a few shovels. Perfect, Chris. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. I'm gonna bring some of the soil over there. We'll cover the bed with mulch and give all the plants a good watering. Wow, Jen, I love how it turned out. It looks great, and I'm especially glad that it's true to the original design. All we did is play checkers with your existing plants. Uh, one thing to remember is that landscapes are fluid and they're forever changing. Things are going to grow at different rates and shapes. So you just got to keep on top of pruning. Uh, in your situation, this was free. Anyone could do this at their own home. So I really hope you enjoy it. That was great. I love it and I will. Thank All right. you. Great. Take care. Hey Jen, welcome to our yard. This is absolutely gorgeous, it's humongous. It is so big, it's great. The girls love it, uh, my dog loves it, the chickens love it, um, but as you know, with a big yard like this um, comes some big problems and certainly some big weeds with this nice fertile soil. My husband and I have done some plantings, we've worked on this pond, which we love, but we're just kind of at a loss and it, I feel really overwhelmed. Well, to me, this space does not look too big. It just needs to be organized and managed. Um, I think just looking in here, you have a lot of great pieces. You have the structure of these boulders that are placed everywhere. You have this pond already started. So what I want to do is go through and weed and clear out, get rid of everything we don't want, and then we'll come up with a design. Yes. So let's start with weeding, and then we'll go from there. OK, sounds good. All right, so Jen, let's, we're going to start with clearing this area. We'll okay. start here and work our way back and incrementally see what we find. One weed at a time. Yep. Look at this. That's really cool. Jen, just uncovering this grass, I mean, look at the edge of this yeah. boulder. We're going to use that as part of the feature somehow. Awesome. I love it. This grass looks perfect, but it's in the wrong spot. So let's uh, dig out the root ball around it and we'll move it somewhere. All right. You got that? Bring it over to the tarp. Beauty. Awesome. So these daylilies are pretty resilient and they'll transplant well. We could even divide them into two or three, okay? okay. Okay, the weeds are gone. We have a new canvas to work with here. And so what I'm thinking is we're gonna design a secret garden for you. That sounds great. So a secret garden to me is somewhere that you enter a garden, there's destination spots, you could circulate around, you, a kid is gonna use it different than an adult, but it's just a little sanctuary, a place to go. Yeah. So within your garden, I have four access points all defined by these large boulders. Okay. There are large pathways that help you travel around. As your first destination spot, you have this incredible boulder here. It's flat, it's a great sitting mm -hmm. rock. You can read a book or play cards. Mm -hmm. And around it, I wanna put in low perennials. And then in the back, I wanna put in a witch hazel that blooms early yeah. in the season. Yeah. So the second destination spot, I wanna put in raspberries and blackberries. Oh, nice. Cause you have this great rugged stone wall and I want it to be a, you could access it from both sides, whether you're on the grass or on the inside. And they could just be a big bramble that covers part of the wall and is a great transition to the woodlands. That sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. 
last you have this pond that's already there. What we need to do is clean up the edges so you could access it from all sides. Um, I want to put in a Japanese maple so it could arch over the edge, maybe protect the fish, give it a little shade, Lovely. and then soften the hardscape around the pond with maybe some succulents or something. Oh, that sounds really good. Let's get to work. All right. We'll start by planting around destination one. These are called Hakone grass, so they'll do well in this light situation Great. and they'll come back every year. They're a perennial. It's a pretty yellow. It's gorgeous. So we're just going to add a little bit of organic starter fertilizer to give the plants a little kickstart. Tease the roots. You smell good. Yeah. Okay, pick a face, Jenny. Yeah, I like it. A little straight. Yeah. Perfect. So this is that day lily that we dug up from the other side of the garden. I'm going to take it and divide it and place it on the side here. They look a little bit rough, but they'll be fine next year. Let's get those raspberries in over by destination two. And last, we could get working around the pond for destination three. Just nestle those succulents right around the edge of the pond. They all grow between three and six inches, so they're gonna stay nice and low. Okay. Would you like it to face this way or towards the pond? This I, is the more arching sign. Yeah, I like it. The idea of it arching over the pond, if that's possible. I'm going to turn it then. I like that position. Looks good to me. Let's cover everything with a good layer of mulch to help the new plants retain moisture. This should help you keep a lot of those weeds from coming back too. Great job on the watering, Jen. Thank you. Definitely keep up with it in this okay. heat uh, until they're established. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is all these plants that we put in are pretty small and they're gonna grow and they're gonna get big. But the great thing is you could make it, you could prune them and shape them to fit your space. Okay. All right? Mm. So one last thing, you just gotta promise me you'll keep on top of the weeds. Okay, I promise. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Take Thanks. care. You too. Next time on Ask This Old House. We'll share with you a few ways to upgrade your garage workshop. So when you swing this up, the legs will swing in and it'll hold the bench out of the way. Nice. And in Akron, Ohio, I'll warm up this garage workshop with a new heater. And this storage shelf can hold all of your tools and the parts to go with them. And I'll show you how to build it.